Okay, this is kind of a maiden voyage, so bear with me a minute because I'm the only technical support here. So um, I am also podcasting this or putting it on my podcast. And this is for ICC students and graduates. So a lot of you know that I have a podcast for a lot of our uh, online classes. And since the COVID, what's not online, right? Um, one of the things that has been really, you know, bothering me, laying heavy on my heart, is that I don't get to see my students. Now, um, there are many reasons why that's important. There's many reasons why not seeing my students weighs heavy on my heart. Uh, one of which is just the general opportunity to mentor, to facilitate to advise you know in the college setting we always talk about advising and we tend to think of that as being something that happens when you're put into a class you're exploring your career and it's something that's done by a general counselor or somebody in the advisement office and those people do a tremendous job and and we need them and they fill a role but in um the career ed education areas especially, and in a lot of the programs when people are deciding on a major, it's important to have input from those individuals who come from that career, who have that expertise in that, those career fields. And one of the things that we do in uh, as professors and educators and program coordinators is we share our experiences and not only share our experiences, but in my case in particular, I like to bring in um, whenever possible the, the advice and the input of our graduates. You know, we have programs in my area, we call it the public services area. So it's paralegal, law enforcement, criminal justice, um, and uh, uh, 911 dispatch when those classes are able to run. In the past, we've had private security. We've had um, fire science has been a part of our area. Public services, people that go out to serve the public in law, and I prefer to say justice as opposed to criminal justice. I'm kind of moving away from that criminal justice tag. Um, I think that our goal and my goal in my lifetime and my goal from every oath that I ever took, you know, taking several different oaths to essentially uphold the, the Constitution of the United States, the laws of the United States, often the laws of Illinois as well. My goal is never to pursue criminal justice, it's to pursue justice, you know, justice. And, and so I tend to talk about things in terms of law and justice. Those are the students I serve, those are the graduates I serve, those are the programs, the stakeholders, the employers that I try to serve. Now, um, one of the things that comes up is, you know, in the normal phase, conversations with students on a regular basis. And students wanna know why we chose the career paths that we chose and how we got into those career paths and what it takes to be successful. And those are things that we should provide to the students. And those things were sort of provided on an ongoing basis, pretty informally, you know, before class, after class, in between class, in our offices, by phone. You know, students as they pursued their education wanted to know more. Um, not just about what the textbook said or what the class was about, but about in general, the career. And especially as you get towards that time where you're going to go out and start looking for jobs or move to that next transfer opportunity to continue your education. You know, in my almost 25 years of doing this, I've had lots of those conversations. And that's something that's weighed heavy on my heart. I miss those conversations, not as much for me personally, and believe me, um, it's always awesome 
to connect with those students because <laughs> I get to see those students succeed. I get to see them take what we provide and go out and actually get jobs. And then they stay in contact long after they've had those jobs. You know, they stay in contact when they're going to look for a different job or to get the promotion or seek the promotion or to get further education. They come back and seek advice and we have further conversation. And it's really, I mean, I get paid for what I do. I got paid a lot more as a partner in a law firm, believe me. I, one of the joys of, of, and one of the benefits and probably almost everybody I know who teaches at Illinois Central College would tell you, we're not here for the money. It's nice that we get paid and we hope to be paid a fair and decent wage, but we chose to be here to see people succeed. And it is, you know, I can tell you for tw almost 25 years of people, right? A lot of my, some of my graduates have retired now. Um, or in, moved on to second careers after retirement, after they're pension eligible. So um, it's really something that, you know, selfishly, it's something that I get something from. Um, but I get that something because I get to see you succeed. I get to see my graduates, my students um, succeed. So. I decided I'm going to start a series of, of interviews. Um, and I'm not sure where this is going to go. Um, I'm not sure essentially, you know, if it's going to be local. I hope it's going to be beyond local because we have graduates all over the, really all over the world. Uh, we have graduates in every alphabet soup federal agency you can think of. We have graduates working in the continental United States and outside the United States, we have graduates working in all different states. And that's including, you know, graduates in the paralegal areas. A lot of our graduates have gone on to be lawyers. That includes lawyers. And that includes people in all walks of life in the more traditional law enforcement corrections um, areas. So I hope to do this as a series and reach out to some of those people, ask my ideas of people in mind, um, you know, ideas of people I want to start this with, and hopefully that snowballs. Uh, but if you're watching this and you are one of those people, a graduate or a um, former student who's now out there working in the field and you want to participate, um, then, you know, let me know. I haven't quite figured out how I'm going to record this uh, podcast, podcast wise, it may just be video, uh, but for this one, I wanted to put it also on the podcast because this one's going to be a little closer to home. Um, to start things off, I'm going to essentially interview myself. I'm going to answer the questions. It really breaks down to four different things that I'm going to ask the people that I'll interview. And so that should be about a, you know, from you, uh, we'll see how it goes, but it you know, I'm thinking like a 30, 40 minute tops conversation, although some of my, you know, colleagues and I, every time somebody graduates, I tell them, you know, you, you were my student, now we're colleagues in law and justice. So um, depends on how talkative they are and how much they want to share and, um, you know, where it goes. But I'm going to ask any of those individuals about their background, their motivation for gravitating towards that career path, wherever they ended up now. And some of them started at one place and moved to other things, but are still somehow in law and justice. I'm going to ask them why they stayed in it. You know, you, you see turnover and people get in and then they decide this isn't for them and that's okay because we want people that want to be in it, but what caused you to stay in it? Because these are people that stayed in it. Um, of course, ask about any advice and wisdom they have for anyone seeking to enter into that particular career. And in all these careers, there's one consistent expectation. There's something that you know we, we always push and that's character. And there's a commitment to the, the, the development of 
and the growth in character and it's career long, it's lifelong, it's commitment. It's a commitment. I'll break that down a little bit when I answer, but um, and then finally, a discussion about current topics and developments related to uh, to the career. And there could be current things going on. Obviously, you know, this is 2020, fall of 2020 when I'm recording this. And, uh, you know, I taught our version of constitutional law over the summer, which is a very hard summer. Um, my students look like our community. And um, they, they were just, you know, a lot of things they were dealing with. It was a hard summer. COVID aside, it was a hard summer to teach uh, police procedure, crim you know, criminal procedure, constitutional law. Um, but it was an even harder summer for many of my students to get their minds around what was going on in the United States, um, and especially those of, who are students of color looking into policing or law enforcement as a career choice. So. Um, just as an example. So let me start this off. Um, my background and motivation for gravitating towards this career path. Uh, I stumbled on it. You know, I stumbled on it. I always did well in, in government classes. I loved history classes. Um, and I, you know, I didn't know that the law was going to be my career, that I was going to end up, you know, in a life of, of dealing with the law. Um, in fact, like many of the people, you know, I was on the Fire and Police Commission and the vice chair of the Fire and Police Commission for a while and participated in the hiring and the promotions and discipline, et cetera, of police and fire, uh, sworn personnel. And, um, you know, one of the things that you see and you always preach, we, we give orientations to people seeking careers in law enforcement. Um, you know, we all have our backgrounds. We all, we're all crazy maybe in our teen years or maybe a little crazy, maybe I was a little crazier than you. Um, but at some point you flip the switch. And so if I were teaching you in the introduction to criminal justice class, one of the first things I do in one of the first weeks is say, you know, where are you right now? Are you wearing your seatbelt? You know, hopefully you're not drinking and driving because you're not old enough to drink. Um, are you obeying the law? You can't go out and enforce the law if you're not inclined to obey the law. And so there's a character switch there. You know, and things that you might have done in your past, those don't get held to be the standard of who you are as you get into the application process and you start to move towards one of these careers. But there needs to be a clear distinction. There needs to be time and distance between when you were doing those knuckleheaded kind of things or and then when you're ready to go and seek employment. So, you know, if you smoked weed with your friends behind the high school building or whatever, um, you can't smoke weed and be a cop. I don't care if it's legal, but you can't. Most departments aren't going to allow it. You definitely can't do things that are illegal. Um, one of the things that will always most likely keep you out of an employment process in law enforcement is if you in any way, you know, bought or sold, especially distributed, illegal contraband. Um, so you think about those things. Stop doing those things. Who are you hanging out with? You know, those character kind of things. Um, but in any event, you know, I kind of was bouncing around. I played basketball at ICC. I had a few different majors. Um, you know, I, I, I was a radio and TV major for a brief second. Um, and, you know, I had a face for radio. I did a little stint at one of the radio stations um, overnight, helping with production and commercials and things. Um, uh, but that didn't stick. And somehow I ended up in, and I don't remember if it was an advisor or how, but 
um, or one of my family friends or family members who was in law enforcement. But I ended up in, in an introduction to what we now call criminal justice. Um, back then it was law enforcement. Our law enforcement program was called Police Science, Introduction to Police Science. I ended up in there and it clicked. Um, it just clicked. I enjoyed the law. I enjoyed studying the law. I enjoyed how the law set parameters that I could understand, not for how we enforce or ticket or arrest, but how we help people in society have a peaceful life. That clicked with me. And it's been sort of my, you know, my uh, guidepost and my direction ever since. Um, it, I just happened on it and it clicked with me. Uh, Doc Wright, Roy Wright was the founder of all of our public service programs. Doc was a lawyer, um, but had been a police officer. He was a police officer, went to law school. And um, Doc became my mentor. He helped me figure things out. And he, you know, really facilitated my interest but more um, facilitated my, essentially my career path. Um, not in a pushy or, he didn't funnel me there by any means, but he definitely helped me anytime I needed advice, anytime I was needed to bounce off choices, um, he was there. And then eventually, obviously, I ended up here back at Illinois Central College where um, when he was heading towards retirement, you know, there was a slot that opened up and it wasn't what I was looking to do at the time, but it definitely is something I've never regretted. Um, I started out, I had a degree in police science from Illinois Central College. Um, I was pushed and I'm glad I was to, uh, towards continue my education. The natural fit was Bradley University, which had an administration of criminal justice degree. I went to Bradley, but Bradley, um, where I got some grants and, and scholarship money at Illinois Central College, um, I didn't get a whole lot at Bradley at the time. And Bradley's tuition was about 10 times as much. And so I worked multiple jobs. And one of the jobs that opened up, um, I actually headed to Bradley because I was Open to walk on in basketball, but uh, Fiorians, you remember Dick Versace was fired in the middle of the summer. Uh, Stan Albeck came on and was officially hired, I believe, the first day of class. And um, there was another guy who was hoping to be a walk on, and, and uh, Coach Keeling called us over to Hostler Hall. Coach Keeling, if you remember Rudy Keeling, bless his heart, um, great guy. He said, guys, new coach doesn't want any walking. So that was kind of over, and that dream was over, and that um, path or that intent was over. Um, I'll never forget that, you know, I was I was pretty mad. I was upset. I was mad. And uh, and Coach Keelan said, you know, Tom, uh, I understand you're upset. Things will work out. You know, it was too late to go to another school, classes had started. Um, but he encouraged me to stick it out. Bradley's a great school. He sort of, you know, uh, helped me realize that, you know, I wasn't ever gonna do more than be a practice player. And, and uh, he helped direct me towards, you know, coaching eventually. But uh, he said, I'm out of a job. And he was out of a job and he had a mortgage and kids. So he put it into perspective. But anyway, um, as luck would have it, when I was an ICC student, I was a cadet in the public safety department. That's now what we call campus police. And um, Bob Walker, the chief, who was a former Peoria Police Department officer, um, Chief Walker and I always got along and, and uh, I ran into him and he heard about my plight or my change in direction. And he said, when are you going to be 21? And that was coming up in a few weeks. And he said, well, you know, when you're 21, 
I'll put you on. And he, he did. He put me on. He swore me in. He put me on. He gave me a job as an officer working, um, you know, weekends, third shift, I believe. Initially, some swing. Um, and it, it was a great opportunity. And that's where I got my start. Continued on through Bradley, moved to the Chicago area, intending to stay in law enforcement. Um, stayed the path for a, a minute, uh, but my goal or my intent in going to Chicago was to go to law school. And uh, as I got further into law school, um, I moved to a law firm working full time, doing a bunch of different things for that law firm. And along the way, then worked for the Illinois Attorney General's office, got a 7-Eleven license, senior law, law student license, where I could actually go and appear in court and, and uh, be listed on documents, et cetera. Um, working for Attorney General Neil Hardigan, uh, Terry Madsen was the head of the Criminal Appeals Division. And at the time, Illinois had the death penalties. So I worked on those briefs and appeals habeas corpus, all kinds of interesting things. And I worked as a research assistant for uh, Gil Johnston, who was the dean of the John Marshall Law School. Finished law school, came back to Peoria. Um, my intent was to do something a little different. I had some job offers doing something a little different with the federal government, but I was married. Um, at the time, my spouse uh, did not want to move or go to some of those places. And so we moved back to Peoria and took a job with a law firm, very great situation. Um, eventually made partner in that law firm, represented a couple of the large, largest police unions locally, uh, kind of stayed connected to my friends um, in that way, and mainly did litigation. Uh, two diverse areas, trucking and ERISA. Employment Retirement In Income Security Act, but then a whole bunch of different types of litigation. Um, and I didn't remember the first year of my oldest kid's life. So during that time, I decided that I wanted to teach. I had taught a little part time. Um, it felt like a good fit. I thought I wanted to do that. And so that's what I gravitated towards. I started applying, I was interviewing at law schools and um, I got contacted that, you know, a buddy of mine was running the fire science program at ICC. Uh, he let Doc know that I was doing that, Doc Wright. Doc Wright and I had a, a lunch and long talk and um, yada, 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 here I am. So that's kind of the background and how I've gotten here. And, and you know, I was a paralegal program coordinator for a while, teach between criminal justice and paralegal smattering of courses. Um, and that's how I got here. And why did I stay in it? You know, I love it. I love it. And I, uh, you know, I love both the law and I love people succeeding in their career paths. So my advice and wisdom to anybody seeking to enter or stay in this career, it's a character issue. And, and for me, character is more than just, you know, abiding by the law, being committed to abide by the law, you know, having that moral compass, don't lie, don't cheat, don't steal, you know, Look out for others, put others before yourself. This is a service area. I don't care if it's paralegal or law enforcement or corrections. Working at the courthouse, becoming a lawyer, you're, you're there to serve other people in law and justice. It's a service area. You have to put other people first. You have to follow the golden rule. Um, you know, so it's those kind of character things. It's keeping yourself fit mentally and physically. It's not abusing drugs or alcohol. It's not uh, having a gambling habit or whatever. It's keeping yourself mental, mentally and physically fit. Physically fit, keeping your body fit, 
you know, paying attention to what you're putting in your body, going to the gym, staying in decent shape, um, being able to perform the functions of the job physically. So it could be those things as well. Um, but most important, I think, is recognizing that this is something that you have to evolve in. It's a lifelong learning career, any of those areas, lifelong learning. The law changes every day. Expectations of the law changes every day. Society changes every day. Things that you thought you knew yesterday are no longer applicable today. So be aware, learn it, adapt, you know, adapt. You have to assess, you have to adapt, and then you advance. You know, and you have to do that. You have to be committed to doing that in these careers. Um, you know, that that leads me to current topics, and it's a prime example. Um, for a while now, things that have gone on have bothered me. And I'll take it back to way before Laquan McDonald, but Laquan McDonald, McDonald was almost local. You know, it's two and a half hours away, but it was close to home. And having worked in Chicago and, you know, being very familiar with Chicago and it was way close to home to me. If you don't know what I'm talking about, Google Laquan McDonald, okay? L-A-Q-O-N McDonald. It was a tragic circumstance. It was something that, that bothered me. Um, and it shouldn't have happened, but it did. And, you know, so I started adding an emphasis on those things and um, why those things were happening, why they continued to happen, what could be done to stop those things from happening. I mean, it's beyond, you know, to a large degree, there is some consideration about following procedure or whether the procedures need to be changed. But after this summer, you know, I think that we got to stop walking around the primary issue, which is systemic racism. Systemic racism in this country. It's not seeing people as you should see them. It's not seeing everyone as equal. It's not seeing, you know, you should go out in these, any of these careers, you should see the person in front of you, whether that person is the victim, the suspect, or whoever. You should see them as you see yourself. You should, you know, they should be in your eyes, no different regardless of their race, their creed, their religion, their status in life, no different. You can't work in these career fields and treat anyone different based on those things. And if you do that, you should be okay. But we have a problem and it's so, that's one of the things I've been working on for myself, recognizing and trying to advance myself to, to be better, but especially my students, because I don't want them to, I don't want one of my students to end up in one of these scenarios, you know, on either end. Um, so it's something I've been working on, you know, two, two ways I've been working on it is just reading, educating myself. Um, and, you know, we, this, this year we had a one college, one book, the one college, one book, uh, was Trevor Noah's born a crime. If you want an, you know, a, a good read that sort of gets into the surface of, of systemic racism, um, it gets below the surface, I should say read that book. I listened to it on Audible because there's Trevor Noah narrating it. Um, 
but it it does a good job. Another is uh, Isabel Wilkerson's uh, cast, C A S T E. That is not an easy read. It is not an enjoyable read. It will tweak you. Um, it will make you think, and it won't make you think about things that are pleasant. But that's okay, because the only way we get to the point where we can, you know, shed some of those things or recognize, address, and shed some of those things that may cause us to act inappropriately um, and see things in a way that we we shouldn't see them is by addressing those issues head on. Um, so I would recommend those things, but I think that's one of the, that's the primary concern of mine right now regarding all these careers. It's something we need to address as a country and it's something we need to definitely address head on, you know, in law enforcement and corrections and, and paralegal, as lawyers, as judges, in the system, the judicial system, the justice system, in the law. So that's one of the things that, that I see as a current topic um, and the most important topic, in my opinion, at this moment in time. I went a little longer than I anticipated. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm hoping this all worked. If it did, I hope you found use of it, and I hope you'll check out the series. I'm going to hopefully get uh, others to participate by using this video, and I may scare them away, maybe like taking my photo and putting it in the basement to keep the mice away. But I'm hoping that they will watch this and then say, you know, Tom, I'd be happy to participate. Um, and again, I think it's one of the most important things that we can do. We can help each other. We can pull each other up. We can help students understand some of the most important things for their ability to serve others in these careers and the way to become successful in getting into and staying in and then leaving the career better than we found it. Stay safe. Stay healthy. Thanks for watching.